<laughs> Thank you, Susie. And so that brings us to today's countdown conundrum. Now, the clue to today's conundrum is TOK students do better when they have these. That's TOK students do better when they have these. Good luck. Oh, uh, is it, is it, is it kills? TOK students do better if they have kills? No, that doesn't make any sense. Um, um, it's slick. It must be slicks. Uh, TOK students do better if they have slicks. Slicks kills ilk. Ilk slicks. Oh. Oh. How did you do? Did you have any luck? Well, here's the big reveal. The answer to today's countdown conundrum is skills. That's right, skills. Do your TOK students have skills? What? What? Skills? What are they? Hi guys, welcome to TOK Today. My name's Daniel and today I'm the tyre on your wheel through TOK Wonderland. Oh dear. This is the final video in the series for teachers who are new to teaching TOK. And today's video is about teaching TOK skills. Let's go. 10 years ago, when the IB published approaches to teaching and learning, they, they identified five skill areas. And we all happily went about teaching skills in, the, in our different subjects. Whilst the skills were fairly well explained on the IB ATL website, they weren't subject specific. Well, they weren't TOK specific. So I thought to myself, what do these skills look like in TOK? Let's have a look at what the 2020 IBTOK subject guide says about skills. Well, how many times do you think the word skill or skills appears in the 2020 TOK subject guide? Well, there are 12 appearances of the word skill or skills in the whole TOK subject guide. That's 12 appearances of the word skill or skills out of 22,551 words in that subject guide. Yes, I counted them. 11 of the instances of the word skill or skills appears in the blurb at the beginning of the subject guide, that blurb which is generic to all subjects, and seven of those 11 appearances are then telling you to go and have a look at the ATL skills on the ATL website. The word skill only appears once in the whole body of the subject guide. So that said to me, we need to do some work on this. We need to identify what skills TOK students specifically need to do well in TOK. And that was one of the main reasons for the birth of TOK Today. <laughs> Ta -da! Well, hold up there, Daniel. The TOK study guide does explain the, the aims of the course. It's there on page seven. Just look. Yeah, sure it does. It describes aims on page seven. It's got some really good aims. And they're a really good starting point to build a TOK course. What I'm doing is I'm going to operationalize the exact skills that students need to do well. Once we've identified them and we've operationalized them, that means we've come up with learning activities for them, we can start to build lessons around them. And I believe that that helps students to do better in TOK. So I've been developing this TOK skills diagram. Now, it's unfinished at the moment, but I've had help from the different TOK teachers that I've worked with in different schools. Um, I'd specifically like to mention Richard Ford at the International School of Bangkok, a brilliant constructivist teacher who's helped me so much in this. And I'd like to mention the Thai TOK Teachers Network, the TOK Teachers Network in Thailand, um, who have all contributed to putting in to this. But there's obviously still a lot more to add to this TOK skills diagram. So I appeal to you as TOK teachers around the world, if you have ideas for what the specific skills are that students need to do well in TOK, email TOK Today, Daniel at TOK Today, um, and, and give me some ideas and we'll, we'll put them onto the uh, TOK skills diagram. You know, I'll attribute you that you've, you've helped to contribute to this. And, and, and hopefully we can come up with the definitive TOK skills diagram. So my starting point is that I've identified eight 
main skill areas. These are like the, the families under which the specific skills live. So I'm tunneling down to find out what the specific skills are that students need to do well in eight of the main skill areas that I've identified. So let me show you how you can plan lessons um, using the TOK skills once we've operationalized them. So let's start with one of the aims of TOK from the TOK study guide, and it's to encourage students to be more aware of their own perspectives and to reflect critically on their own beliefs and assumptions. I chose three skill areas which relate to this aim. Personal emotional skills, identifying knowledge issues and formulating knowledge claims. Now I know that knowledge issues are not there in the new guide, but um, I'm an old teacher, I'm a dinosaur of a teacher. No, no, I, I think that you still need to identify knowledge issues, to have an understanding of knowledge issues, to be able to understand the perspective section of the knowledge framework and, and possibly to understand the ethics section of the knowledge framework. I think that, that idea of knowledge issues, biases, um, is, is a really useful one for TOK students to have. Okay, so we look at each of these skill areas um, and what I do is I then have uh, sort of drill down to come up with specific skills for each of the big skill areas. So for the skill area personal emotional, the specific skill here is identifying the source and purpose of personal beliefs and assumptions. And for the uh, skill area of identifying knowledge issues, I've put in the specific skill is finding knowledge issues in personal beliefs and assumptions. And finally, for the skill area of formulating knowledge claims, the specific skill is describing a knowledge claim which supports personal beliefs and assumptions. Now remember, I've come up with these skill areas, the big skill areas myself, or at least in collaboration with other TOK teachers. I've uh, operationalized, or I've, I've, I've sort of identified, developed, I've developed a specific skill for each skill area here. And, there are many, many more of these which we'll need to develop over the next few months. And then from each of those specific skills, I've developed a learning activity. So for, the, for this specific skill, identifying the source and purpose of personal beliefs and assumptions, the learning activity is for the students to identify uh, a particular personal belief or assumption and then ask the question, when and why did I first start to believe that belief or assumption? For the specific skill of finding knowledge issues in personal beliefs and assumptions, the learning activity is for the students to think about or identify what are the biases in that original belief. So the belief or assumption that they've identified here, then they've got to sort of think about what are the biases or, or in that belief. And then we're going to be teaching them about different types of biases. And yeah, they'll be doing some paired work or some group work in trying to identify the biases in their particular belief. Finally, moving on, um, the, for the specific skill of describing a knowledge claim which supports personal beliefs and assumptions, the learning activity here is to write a counterclaim to the belief or assumption that they um, originally identified over here. So they're writing a counterclaim here. Now, obviously, that's developing a skill which is really going to help them when it comes to the essays. So hopefully you see that once you've operationalized the, the actual skills, um, then you've got a set of learning activities. You essentially have a lesson. You're able to put that together into a lesson. And that's a lesson which is specifically designed to teach a set of skills to meet the aims of TOK. And therefore, it should uh, improve the learning of the students in TOK and demystify TOK for them. And the grades will go up and everyone will have, live happily ever after. So my advice for teachers who are new to teaching TOK is to think intentionally about the skills when you're doing your planning. Identify a skill for each lesson or a couple of skills. Plan around those skills, operationalize them, plan around them, and come up with activities which specifically develop that skill in the lesson. Don't worry about delivering content. I know that I'm like a broken record on this. But yeah, you don't have to worry about the content. Think about the skills, allow the students to bring the content to the skills. That's co-construction, and we all know, all good things flow from co-construction. All good things flow from co-construction. So this is the final video in the series for uh, teachers who are new to teaching TOK.
It was meant to be three videos. It's turned out to be at least six videos. If you like this video, press like. If you loved the video or you'd like more, then I'd be super grateful if you would press subscribe. There's going to be a lot more coming up from TOK today. This is my love. This is my passion. So I'm going to be producing more of this uh, similar content to this, um, delving into TOK, trying to pull it apart and work out how we can deliver it uh, in the best way possible for our students. So I hope you liked today's walk through TOK Wonderland and I'll bid you goodbye and have a great day. Bye.